walls. To enter exists Cobra is strong. Oh my goodness, we're going way over budget. Barbarians! No, no, no! Cut! 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 You fool! This is what I want! Keep the film rolling! Hey everyone, um, just real quick, I want to throw in there that I really hope if you enjoy things on this channel and then you enjoy listen to us ramble as a bunch of aging um, Gen X millennials, uh, zennials, or whatever they, the whole term is, I don't really understand. But uh, I would hope if you enjoy listening to us talk and you want to maybe get involved, um, let us know. Um, send messages to the YouTube, send messages to the email, and most of all, like and share the channel just a little bit it goes a long way so thank you so much for checking this out and being here and i hope to keep doing this as long as you'll allow me to or as long as i can keep doing it and you know enjoy this well it's been 40 years i think i'm gonna continue enjoying this so thanks for being here everyone i truly appreciate it and i truly mean it till next time Hey everybody, welcome to More Than Mises, guys. We are doing a sub subdivisions. Thank you. God, don't, I have that on, I have that file saved just in case. Oh, did you? Yeah, man, of course I do. So I'm going to uh, creep out your friends and they listen to it. Subdivision. Um, <laughs> so man, we have been, uh, we've been using cold slither for like jokes for a while. I've been doing these little zingers at the end of the episodes and our top YouTube video is a little one minute, 10 second clip I made with a uh, God Gambit clips and uh, the song Cole Slither. And um, so we just. Oh, oh, you said God Gambit. I thought yeah, you said God something Gambit. not appropriate for uh, our uh, PG rated show. I am always appropriate, but okay. uh, <laughs> I just want to make sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So the God Gambit clip of, uh, of um, with using uh, Cole Slither as a song. Anyways, um, so we did the gambler last week. And so this week you suggested we do Colt Slither. And I got to thank you, man. Immediately. Well, well, well because uh, well, well, I was disappointed that uh, an episode called The Gambler didn't feature any Kenny Rogers music in it. And But second of all, um, these were written by the same by the same person. Uh, this was, uh, oh God, I didn't, I didn't write his name down this time. Is it Charles Hill? Charles Hill? Michael Charles Charles Hill. I knew it was Charles Hill. I thought I, thought, I knew there was a third name in there. Yeah, no, uh, I, as, uh, as a little you know tease for you guys. Also, um, he's agreed to come uh, talk to us. Uh, so this week, and um, do not hopefully Ed can be there as well. I had to try to schedule because uh, Hill's like he's on the West Coast. We are not on the West Coast, so uh, he we're gonna uh, sit down this week and man, pick his brain about all kinds of things. That I mean, I, I gotta know what with this episode. I gotta know. Uh, yeah, same. Uh, I am on the South Coast. The rarely talked about South Coast. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, um, this was uh, this is uh, GI Joe Real American Hero season one episode fifty one. Yep. And I and I'm complaining about how long Transformers season two is, and this is Joe. season one episode fifty one. But I, I want to get this is see. I, I want to talk about something here though, yeah. because, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I, I don't remember. It's, this is weird because this had some like later guys in it, guys that, that were like after, like in my brain, the prime of GI Joe here. And it, I didn't think that this would have been season one. I felt like those guys would have been season two, but I guess it was just, I guess I just dumped the season that they made this thing. And then it, as they were making the, toys i guess was i i guess is how the release schedule was i i don't know um i think uh the whole thing with those uh those first like almost like their mini series is like you know um the revenge of cobra or the pyramid of darkness all those those were like almost self-contained little mini series they put out but then they, they put them together as the whole beginning of season one and so kind of after those those initial things happened and they started bringing in a lot of the other characters which yeah well, I, once again i was looking at season one characters i'm going who are these people? Because there are so many characters that just show up and or don't even show up at all. Made a, they made a figure of them and they just won with the next one. 
Hey, Man. yeah, there were a lot of characters in in uh, in GI Joe. But what was funny though is I, I went to look a couple of these guys up. I was I, I found a really cool site. Um, uh, I found a couple. I found uh, yojo.com, which is a very yeah. good uh, site that I've been using for years to look up GI Joe stuff. That is cool because you can go year by year, and it's it's very cool to see. Like I'm like, oh, what all did I have from that series? What all did I have from that series? That was cool. Um, there was another one though that that was just scans of the file cards. Oh yeah, and uh, that was very handy for something that we're going to talk about later on in this episode. So, oh, good, you're good. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> man, this thing starts out though. It just starts out. It just starts. It's okay. Cobra has some trucks, and they've got their own branding on the trucks. Oh yeah. This Ready. is real cool. This is real cool. You got to like with, with a logo that cool. I feel like you have to stencil and spray paint that thing everywhere. It's okay. like you're in the Misfits. You carry this. You carry the screen print around with you when you go to the shows and you just screen print people's uh, leather jackets. That's that's mm -hmm. how this that's how Cobra works at this point, I guess. Um, well, this is real yeah. cool. And the thing is, they have these this this whole thing where they get bases everywhere. You like you roll up like on, on some you go some touristy destination in the uh the, in the uh yucatan peninsula you're probably going to walk up on a cobra base they're all they're all over the place and we're going to get we're going to talk about that in a little bit too okay yeah yeah um so in major blood is here oh i love major blood major sebastian blood do you know uh, that, do you know that it's his actual name i did not know it was that was his name it actually works really well like that. major sebastian blood yeah who i remember from his file card i remember he was a uh had a penchant for uh poetry he, he really liked to write uh write poems um and uh, my, my, uh, my best friend uh, that I first got into, into G.I. Joe with back in the day, my best friend, Ryan, who I usually listens to the show, I think. Um, so, hey, Ryan, how's it going? I know you were a huge, a huge, huge fan of Major Blood. I remember he got that figure and um, and he was just like, like enamored with this dude. And he had there was a little sample of his poetry on the on the back of the card. And he had that memorized. He would all every time we played with him, he would he would say that. uh thing and i don't remember what the what the poem was i didn't look that one up but it, it it one of the uh one of the lines was slap a fresh clip in your uzi which i thought was very cool <laughs> and um <laughs> is he west coast represented he didn't he didn't even come with an uzi is the thing that <laughs> <laughs> what i thought was funny about major blood is that he had a um he had a bionic arm. one of his arms was a bionic arm mm -hmm. so uh, the way they modeled that on the figure was um it didn't move he didn't have a he didn't have an elbow or a uh, or a biceps uh, articulation. He didn't have a swivel arm battle grip or huh. um, or an elbow. There, it was just a, it was like a straight, like kind of curved arm. And I always thought that was yeah. silly because if you're going to have a bionic arm, I would think it would be more flexible than than a uh, than a, a regular arm. But um, that was cool. Oh, but yeah. anyway, uh, so th these Cobra dudes are unloading some stuff here at the at the uh, the orders of Major Blood and. Um, cover girl uh comes rolling up in a in an off striker did you, ever, did you have the off striker when you were a kid i did not but i also wanted to ask man how difficult is it to tell the difference between cover girl and scarlet uh well scarlet has long red hair and cover girl has short brown hair so it's not very difficult at all to do to, to, to tell all right apart. well i'm sorry man i, I guess i'm not no, as much of a uh, joe fan how uh, hard is it to tell sunstreaker from sideswipe well yeah those are primary colors man red and brown Red and okay. If you look at it, if Long, you look, someone, I have how red. Hard is it, how hard is it to tell you from me? Oh man, come on. That's not fair. Scarlet, yeah, they all, okay. they all look alike. I'm, okay, so, so Scarlet, <laughs> um, <laughs> Cover Girl, Cover Girl, Cover Girl. Cover, you know, Cover Girl was a model. Did you know that? Yeah. That's why she got her name, Cover Girl. That's right. Um, which is, uh, like, oh, like, I don't know. That's not, that's some brand, uh, synergy they got going on there that's a yeah. brand of, of makeup back in the day but she came with uh with a tank called the wolverine mm -hmm. that had um it came with a bazillion missiles that all, each missile had um like two stickers uh, two beware of blast stickers that went on oh, it God, and, I um, this. it was awful uh because there, there were certain <laughs> joe vehicles that just came with massive amounts of stickers and um and they were a pain to put. It was one of those, those Christmas morning things where your your, your dad was just like, "I've got to put seventy four no step stickers on this Sky Strikers wing flaps," and uh, and I could just see the pain in my dad's face, like getting these things straight. But 
I, I took that um the Wolverine when I got the Wolverine I, I went to stay with my grandparents and um they had an old house that didn't have central heating and air and uh the heat in the house just made all those stickers just curl up and just kind of like slide off of the thing. So for years, <laughs> I, had, um, I had sticky missiles uh, on my yeah. Uh, on my those it clear stickers. It, was, it, it wasn't the, the the Wolverine itself. It was just the missiles because yeah, I think yeah. it had, I think it had sixteen missiles. I think it had like two racks of of eight. I think is how it mm-hmm. is how it worked. Um, that was a cool toy though. But they had like all those little clear stickers, right? They were like almost like cellophane with like little, yeah, so, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well. They were clear. They just had the text. It was almost yep. like a um. They, they were almost like like decals, like uh, yeah. like yeah. fucking decals, but they were stickers. Um, yeah. Was, so uh, anyway, she she comes rolling up in the in the ostrich in the off striker. Did you did you say you had the off striker or no? Because I didn't have it either, and it was one of those things that it was um. That was in that wave of, of things where they were doing newer versions of things that had already come out like things that had the same role as things that had already come out so i already had the vamp i had a jeep already oh yeah i, I did too i didn't yeah so i didn't need like a dune buggy jeep i already had a jeep with laser cannon on it i didn't need another one unfortunately um, they use the uh, all striker all the time they use the all striker all the time um and i was real um i was real annoyed because they redid the vamp at some point too because the vamp initially was was a jeep that had a laser cannon on the back Mm -hmm. um they redid it as the vamp mark ii that had a had um four missiles on the back of it and i hated that because i was like right what's that what did it wasn't it tan they 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 did redo it in tan you had the the tan Um, one i know that yeah and i was irritated because it's like you can shoot four times and then you're done with a laser cannon you can just keep shooting forever like 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 you know that's not right you know if you ever watch any of these episodes they will fire all four missiles although i know i know know they will yeah they Um, just push up like they're like teeth they can push right up so Uh, (laughs) jet pulls up (laughs) they just they just open fire on these poor Cobra guys. They have no idea. They're not going to check it, see if anything's weird. If it's like a false flag or if what they're doing, they're not going to arrest these guys or anything like that. They are coming in and blasting with these with laser artillery on I the was, back of these all strikers. I was so excited to see um a gun ho on the, on the back one of the all strikers on the gun just laying waste to these trailers, just with abandon shooting. It doesn't matter if he shot a, a, a building, a truck, a dude, a scorpion. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Dude, he, this dude just wanted to unload. And because this is a uh, gung ho was a guy that uh, I don't know if did you have that? Was that a figure that you had? I did not have the figure I knew of it. I never had it. He was a big buff Marine guy mm-hmm. that just wore a vest. All, all he wore was a vest and he had big a giant Marine tattoo. Marine, on his yeah, he had a Marine globe. But his, the, the weapon he came with was just a grenade launcher. It was just, that's just how he rolled, was just grenade launcher. He didn't have like a, a rifle with a grenade launcher on it. He just, yeah. he just chucked grenades all day long. Dude, um, also, later on, they, they released him in like dress blues. I don't know if you saw that. That was a very cool figure, actually. Yeah, that, uh, really cool. yeah, um, yeah. I like that one a lot because he had the the yeah the dress things with the with the saber and the hat and all that stuff. Yeah. That was a very cool figure. Um, so, but right after they start shooting from from these off strikers, these dune buggies, basically, right then a, a sky striker comes out of the sky and just starts lobbing missiles at the at this uh, at this truck, like. It, it, like where what like that's an f-14 you know how fast that thing goes? and the best part about that is it swoops in like five feet from the ground it pulls oh. back like it's nothing i mean the pilot's name is ace he can yes. if anybody yeah. can do this he can do this okay <laughs> like it's, it's, it's like it's like the uh the the, the um there's a gi joe um deep sea diver deep six deep six like, right if he was on a deep six someone is gonna be that guy he's gonna take he's it that guy right yeah. Yeah. So when I was a kid, um, we, we were playing in my backyard once, and uh, like, I remember the the the, uh, the Sky Striker came with two seats that had um, mm-hmm. plastic parachutes. So you throw you you take them out like ejector seats. You throw them in the air, and the guys would parachute down. So it, my friend, my friend just uh, took one of them out with Ace in it and hurled it up, and like the wind caught it and oh, it like no. it drifted to the roof of my of my house. And so, like, Ace was on the roof of my house for like, like, probably like two years before we got him down. <laughs> and, yeah, I was yeah, real mad yeah. about that. Thanks, thanks, Brian. Thanks, you conspiracy-addled uh, wingnut. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about Brian. <laughs> well, I've, ta- I've talked to my Brian on the show before. Um, um, so yeah, man. Um, so but also I'm really here for uh, Firefly. I don't see enough things with Firefly. Firefly is uh, Firefly is awesome because uh, Firefly is one of those guys that uh, when you were a kid and you got that figure, it was like, who is this dude? What does he do? He's a saboteur. He's a ninja. He's he was a saboteur. He was a saboteur. He, looks, he looks like a gray ninja. He looks like a gray camouflage ninja, and like that was when you I was a kid. I'd never seen gray camouflage. How cool is gray camouflage? Mm-hmm. Um, he was yeah, he was real cool. And um, also, uh, but around the time that I got him, I also got the um, like Cobra had that uh, the, the set was called the Cobra Night Landing. It was a, uh, a like a Zodiac raft. I yeah. do remember that set. That was really yeah. cool. I really like that. Yeah, he, he he paired up real cool with that because oh, yeah. like, he could he could go in like at night and he looked like he was he was gonna he was going to take care of uh, some South American government in the middle of the night. You know, he's gonna, gonna take well, him I, out. I, I, since he's Cobra, I think he was probably going to take care of uh like some oh. uh he, North American uh he <laughs> was the government. He was going after SEAL Team Six, who was going after some Central American despot. Who we're going to put in a new democratic? Uh, uh, right, okay. right. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Makes sense. Um, Counter so counterterrorism. He was, but yeah, he was a real cool looking guy. I like. I liked him. Yeah. I was a huge fan of him when I was a kid because he looked. He looked a lot like um, Snake Eyes and uh, Storm Shadow and uh, uh, Beachhead. He looked. Beachhead a lot like is those, the other one. Yeah, com- it was kind of commando guys with the balaclavas and everything. Yeah. Um, uh, we get the GI Joe Slugger pulls up which is like an artillery piece on on six wheels it kind of shows oh, in the yeah. background and, it was uh, one of those yeah. really Im- like impractical things but it was just whatever cool yeah um so t- this is literally two minutes into this episode and there's three toys that i want right now like uh i okay. i i i gotta say that real quick now i whenever you uh you get those old catalogs whenever you got the, the toy and they like, have like these really limited things like transforms the same way you could you could send away for these toys they always had like the uh gi joe and cobra gliders like the one you had that they also i i yeah. maybe this is like a mandela effect with me i think they had like um cobra trucks like you know uh, covered trucks but maybe it might be a mandela effect no, there wasn't a cobra one i, I think there may there may have been one later on that was a uh like a recolor of mm-hmm. the gi joe one because they, they did a lot of that later on um there was the uh the the, the gi joe the uh the, like the apc the armored personnel yeah. carrier that um it was like a big uh like a deuce and a half almost um mm-hmm. or it was it was amphibious personnel carrier because it, would float, yeah, it actually floated in the water um, yeah, but the cover would come off and it had seats in it and then mm-hmm. um what was cool is the bumper on the back pulled out and you could use like a carrying case. So oh, um, nice. Yeah, if your GI Joe's were seat belted in like they should have been and everything was sealed up right, you could just pick yeah. up and carry all your GI Joe's. Or a real American, models. yeah, a real American hero would use a seat belt. So yeah, he should be strapped in. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, uh, Ralph Nader, uh, a real American hero. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, um, so they, they like, they, they go and uh, lay waste to all the covers and they go in there, they raid the base. And they find this treasure room. They they find Smog's hoard <laughs> here, and there is a freaking Mona Lisa. <laughs> Cobra's got the Mona Lisa in there, dude. <laughs> Sitting in dude, some they've got desert some bags. Base. They've got some bags with uh with like money symbols on them. Which did you know that Gene Simmons from Kiss owns the trademark on the bag of money? Okay, look. First of all, no, I did not. And second of yes, all, he, you totally he, see that. He'd be like, you can't use that without paying him money. That's how he stays afloat. That's how he stays. Days. That's how he stays yeah. rich. The yeah. Scrooge McDuck know that he has that. Man, I don't. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, okay, not okay at all. So, but yeah, they they seize all this stuff, man. And uh, so the the next scene. This is so. Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> I'm so happy with this next. Scene. Cobra, Cobra Commander is meeting with Tomax and Zamot. Yes. So, so Transformers fans, if you're not familiar with Tomax and Zamot, these are two twins. Um, you can only tell them apart because one parts their hair on one side, one parts their hair on the other side, and also one has a scar on his so yeah. cheek. But they, they dress, they they look, they they look. All right, now this is. I hope I don't push anyone out for this. And that they look like Reaganites. They are wearing the same blue sport coat and khaki slacks and red tie, exactly the same. And they, oh, oh, no, no, they're definitely no. These guys are definitely '80s corporate raider types. They're. Yeah. Uh, they own uh, a thing called Extensive Enterprises, which is I love that name so much. Is is great. And what was funny is years ago, years and years, like in like 1997 or something like that, um, 
when I was registering my copy of uh, of Windows, it mm -hmm. it was like asking me for my company name. And I put extensive enterprises in there. And I'm, I migrated my data so often that that carried over like well into like Windows XP. Like That's you, probably up to 2005, yeah, I had yeah. things registered under uh, under extensive enterprises. Um, but yeah, so uh, what, I guess what you find out here, and this is one of those things that I, I think the seed of this idea was probably from the comic books because uh, Larry Hama we've talked about before larry hama uh, wrote the comics and he was kind of a the, the lore master of gi joe yeah yeah and i think that this is an idea that probably came from him i would really like to to talk to um uh to oh my god i don't have i don't have michael charles hill yes michael charles hill um so i would very much like to talk to him about this because uh i, I wonder if it's one of those things where it's like a you know there was like a gi joe bible that that hama had that they yeah. they, they just kind of you know pulled ideas from and wrote this kind of stuff but i i get what it's what you kind of find out here and i don't know if this ever was ever really touched on before was that uh i i guess on some level extensive enterprises funds cobra mm -hmm. which I is well, I kind of get, get like they're the uh, the Enron of Cobra. They're like they're like have they have securities and hedge funds built with that's like supporting Cobra, and like a uh, you know Cobra Commander does these heists, and we don't see the ones he actually gets away with. We assume that JJ mm -hmm. stops them all. You can't stop them all, so I'm sure right. there are heists and those uh, those treasure hoards like Smog's hoard that he had there in the in the desert. It probably what they they put those up for collateral for securities and basically fund the operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, it, it also in the comics, though, also they touch on the fact that um, oh, yes. Cobra Commander was basically a, an Amway salesman. Yes, he was, an Amway salesman. He was a multi-level marketer. I forget that all the time. He was. Yeah, and he was a Amway money, salesman. Yeah, and that's where the money from Cobra came from. Was that he, he was the, he was he was, on the pyramid, man? He was. He was. He was the, he was the top of the pyramid, and he, and he started out somehow. Got he transitioned over to terrorism, but um. So <laughs> that is one of the weirdest mundane everyday it's, things oh, god that, i, I so weird and cool um the gi I mean, joe lore is so amazing in that way well uh i mean you know we, we talk on transformers a lot we talk about real world factors creeping into the episodes and and it's i, I don't know how prevalent it is these days but um i mean like uh amway was uh, kind of a boogeyman around this time oh yeah and, and so that, that kind of makes sense but um and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell i'll tell my my amway story at the end here because um okay yeah i'm afraid to derail this but uh but so tomax and zamot tell cobra commander that he's broke mm -hmm. the cobra cobra is broke and out of business and because all of the cobra troopers are filing for unemployment <laughs> in, in their uniforms Dude, we cut to the unemployment line and they're all in their uniforms. <laughs> That's the best thing. They're all in the cover uniforms and a line with their like, paper for unemployment. And they're all they're all they all have like like the mask. The cover uniform is like a German like steel helmet with, with a like like with a ninja mask. And so it's it's like <laughs> dozens of these guys. And I'm like, I'm like you guys are <laughs> You guys are known terrorists to the point that uh -huh. the U.S. government has a special task force just to, to kill you guys. But look, but, but man, their profit shares are at risk here because of the the risky um, investments from excessive enterprises on behalf of Cobra. So they have to like uh, an employment. Oh my God, this is great. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is this is awesome. So yeah, Cobra Commanders is, is broke. Cobra's broke and out of business, and so it, it's it's implied within the context of the next scenes it's implied that gi joe is now bored they have nothing to do anymore because they're so we first we cut to some gi joe guys um watching football which is it's the, it's if you look at the uniforms it's the steelers versus the 49ers yep i saw i saw this. Um, actually i yeah, thought it was so, the um 49ers versus the raiders that's what i meant that's what i meant I, yeah, yeah. I, I i typed steelers i, I meant i meant the raiders yeah but, yeah um, I, i'm right there with you so the, the the QB here is from the uh, from the Steelers or from the from the Raiders yeah. is number thirteen, uh, which is Hunter Renfrew's number right now or was until he I guess he got traded like a couple of weeks ago. But um, so on on GI Joe he throws an interception, which is very very on Raiders, for yeah. Hunter Renfrew. Um, but he threw it to number ten. Number ten from the Forty ers picked him off, which that is. 
that is a quarterback's number. Yeah, it, it is. I really didn't think about that. You're right. Yeah. So, so I guess the QB just jumped, just, I guess it was, would have been Joe Montana just ran on the field. He wasn't number, he wasn't number 10, but I guess he just <laughs> ran on the field and, and picked him off and, and ran it back for a, uh... what are uh, what free safeties? What, what number, you know, area are they? Free say, uh, I mean, d- defense are normally higher, not are normally well, higher. Are. Numbers, though, so they are. Mean, I'm trying to think free safeties. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember, but yeah. uh, I, I do I know. I mean, like, like, like one through 10 are, t- are typically going to be typically, yeah, typically. typically. And I, I know they changed it a lot lately, but um, so uh, yeah, but uh, they are cool. they are like watching football and Cobra interrupts the broadcast, <laughs> yeah, like what, the, what. The, like a good a good salesman, he's like, I'm gonna take 60 seconds during the football game. Yeah, this was cool. And uh, he's he's it's, it's yeah. just some empty promises. Like it's the, it's the same stuff that Cobra usually puts out. So so GI Joe's like Duke's like, man, I guess we just gotta, I guess we just gotta go. I guess we gotta go check these guys, check these guys out. Um, oh yeah, so they find this Cobra. They fly somewhere and they find this Cobra fortress, and. I'm just saying that maybe if Cobra didn't spend so much money on these giant snake statues on every fortress they have, they may still be solvent. Look, they, this is branding. You got to have branding. Uh, they I can't just spray paint their their Cobra head on everything. I know you got to have branding. These guys, it's giant sculptures of big snake heads. These massive snake heads. And I'm just and, and like uh, Tomax and Zaymont need to audit. They need. We need. We need. We need the books here because somebody's cooking the books. Destro is making too much money off this. He's pocketing all this money. Oh yeah, man. He, he's the arm salesman. He's he's definitely going to uh, be making his cut of this. Oh. Which he will come in later, anyways. He will come in. He will come in later. So in here we see the gliders. We see Duke and somebody else on these gliders. Branded. So, I remember these gliders, and uh, these were uh, of all the GI Joe toys. These were possibly the worst, and. Oh, yeah. um, because they were just they were this flimsy foam. They were they were supposed to be uh, where it was a piece of plastic that had a like a hole for the the dude would would clamp onto it sort of, and that like that plastic thing like clipped onto this giant foam glider, mm-hmm. which you would throw. You would in real life you would actually throw yeah. it and it would and it would glide, which was which was awesome. Yeah, it was it, awesome. It, it kind of worked. Forty five seconds. It was amazing until it hit the tree. Or you picked okay. it up by the wing, and it and the foam just snapped because it was like like paper thin foam. It was like, um, and you know, uh, it reminds so, me of you remember those uh, this when you were we were younger. Um, they had those big like styrofoam planes with yeah. the you, yeah you you go out there and they're like this wide. You mm-hmm. throw them and they're like they do cool loops and it hit yep. a tree and like a wing come off and right? the wing just comes yep. right off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I I had one of those. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, but I remember um, uh, what, around the time that glider came out, uh, it was uh, it was my friend Ryan once again. Let's talk about Ryan. Ryan. Um, it was it was his birthday, and uh, my dad and I went to the store to, to get uh, to get him a present. And um, and he, I, I was like, Dad, can we get him a GI Joe thing? And he's like, Yeah. And he's like, Well, he's like, well, you can get him something. You can get yourself something small if you want to. And um, that's really cool. And I was like, I was like, maybe I'll get a figure or something like that. But um, I couldn't find a figure I didn't have. So, but they had, they, they, they had a really cool thing where they, um, they had like a blister pack that just had guns and backpacks. In it. Oh, I love those things. Yeah. yeah the, the, the weapons accessory pack. And I was like, well, dad, can I get this? And he's like, yeah. And, uh, so like I got that and I got, and I got Ryan the glider for his birthday that year. And, um, and I was like, while I was, while we were wrapping up, I was like, man, I kind of want to keep the glider for myself, man. I'm kind of, I was kind of, and, and, but now I'm like, uh, I'm like, oh, I gave I gave Ryan the glider. And now I'm like, I'm like, oh man, I now I ended up with a better toy. I ended like I ended up with a way better toy. So hey, Ryan, sorry about um <laughs> sorry about giving me a glider uh back in 1984. Uh we had a really good time playing with that thing that day. For five minutes, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, so we go uh they they hit the base, so the glide in the base, and they are they are um they they um Oh God, I think I think we dreamt ahead a little. I don't know. Maybe we didn't. Yeah, they find out this co- Tomax and Zaymont are foreclosing on and auctioning off this Cobra base. They're they are leading around like the worst terrorist country like <laughs> leaders around this Cobra base in this mountain. Like it, it's it's fine. They're like oh, we are foreclosing on, and they the other guy, you know, the other one ends up like 
on other assets, we are trying to find a way to make us not, you know, it's basically make it solvent. Like they're trying to yeah. reclaim their assets. So, yeah, they, yeah, they're they're they, they've got like this group of, of uh, like, like the guy that's not the Ayatollah Khomeini. There's, there's basically <laughs> not every bad guy from like the news what? in 1984 here. There's like not uh, Muammar Gaddafi. There's like, yeah. you know, like uh, not the Shah and... Um, <laughs> It was surprised uh, not a guy in the green military uniform with a cigar, you know, then sunglasses. Oh, walking yeah, out there. yeah, it was not um, uh, Fidel Castro was yeah. uh, was hanging out there. So this was this was real cool. <laughs> Leading um, around like a like a tour. Like <laughs> yeah, so they're, yeah, they're basically basically they're they're like real estate agents selling this yeah. uh, selling this house over here. And like over here, you'll see the extensive kitchens and uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, they they find a uh, a hangar with a bunch of his tanks and uh, like like cardboard cutouts of of cobra the troops truth. and uh, this was real like duke was real mad and he just like kicked, he pushed he pushed him over and made like the domino a dominoes fall but um but ah so we figured we find out what's going on here oh so, this is so good okay so we have cobra commander and firefly and they're going to a place called stinky's billiards emporium um, they they uh they also are like walking through a bunch of homeless guys like warming their hands off over trash cans in complete disguise with like like okay. khaki colored trench coats. Okay, all right. So I'm um, all right. I I I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta talk about this. I'm okay, about this. please, do, man. Um, uh, so friend of the show Jehu, um, back in the day, uh, you, he used to work at a comic book shop back in the day. And uh, he and his friends there, because like back in this in like old Fantastic Four comics, um, the thing would often wear this disguise <laughs> where he would have like on like a like a tan trench coat and he'd put on a hat and some <laughs> sunglasses, which is yes, ridiculous, yes. which is absolutely ridiculous because he's the thing is massive. The thing, you know, the thing weighs like a, like two tons or something like that. And he's and he's just a, a gargantuan man. So he, like you see like a dude as wide as a Volkswagen wearing a trench coat and you're like, I wonder who I wonder who that is. I wonder who that guy is. Yeah. Um Raphael from Ninja Turtles uh oh, favored this also. Um but uh so uh, there was the ended up there ended up being a slang term for it for 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 him wearing this and uh when in the night in the 90s there were tons of marvel comics action figures they they made just millions of these different figures and they they were always on clearance at kb toys mm -hmm. they, yep. they were you could get them all for like, like 2.99 back then and uh so they made this and he he called him porno going thing in the in the trench coat in the, and so and, and that is just the slang of 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 what my circle of friends has called oh, that whoa. thing figure with a trench coat on because it's like you go into a to a a an adult theater and so when i saw these guys i was like two of them going <laughs> That was exactly what I thought of. Was billiards hall? <laughs> so they're going to st Stinky's <laughs> billiards hall. So um, there's there little guys out there who's like, "Oh, I see the aliens have landed," or something like that. Yeah, and um, and, and so, but I, I deduce that they have to be in New Orleans because if something that happens in a minute, they have they're probably in New Orleans right here. And I'm like, I'm like, a, a dude walk around in a silver mask with sunglasses on it over it wearing a trench coat and a hat is probably the most normal thing you'd see mm -hmm. in this neighborhood in new yeah, Orleans. Yeah. um yeah so yeah they go into uh stinky's billiards hall they go right to the back door and knock on it and this guy pulls open those little those little keyhole uh, you know things and he recognizes i'm like well obviously it's come on oh, in guys wait for you he's done business here before right? this is this is how yeah. he does business apparently you know so yeah, they go in this room and the best, best of a stereotype of a gangster who is a little person. He's he's a, a, a he's dwarf little, or a midget little person, I guess is the right. Lucian will say that. He is he is very small and he's wearing a wife beater and a hat. And he, he doesn't know real words. And uh, he, he calls, so he has a, a briefcase full of money and he calls it soft currencibles. I'm like, I was like, is that a word that I don't know? Is that like, it might, it might be, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't bother to look it up. I just thought it was, I thought it was a funny term. I mean, soft there, was, there was a, there's a whole thing at the beginning. It's like, so how can I be of abstinence to use? Yeah, I think you mean assistance. I said what I said. 
<laughs> this was great. Um, <laughs> I was I was trying to be specializable, not so short. <laughs> So he's basically, I guess he's fronting uh, Cobra Commander some money, but as part of the deal, he wants to see Cobra Commanders. He wants we're going to take the mask off. Show me your face. And you want to see, yeah, you want to see the face, and um, I mean, he's wearing the full battle mask here. Again, this is before he started. They started going into the hood. I, like I don't, I don't know, because the well, hood I think would be more comfortable than uh, you think, yeah. you know, than wearing that battle mask around. So. But he wears know. that later, anyways. Um, that's yeah, yeah, you're right. He does. Um, but he has, yeah. So uh, he's like, I want to see your face. And he gives him, by the way, $100,000 at a 400% interest rate. Michael Charles Hill, you love exorbitant rates from gangsters. They did the same thing with Gambler. He does. He does. Yeah. He absolutely. I will front you this money if I expect 400%. <laughs> oh, that's a lot. That's like, dude, that was like the interest I was paying on my car when I was, uh, when my credit was wrecked. Yeah. Um, uh, so they, they leave, and the, the sign now says uh, Snicky, st- Snicky. I saw the same thing. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. It messed up. <laughs> it's it's sign, like AI yeah. art made a sign on, on the outside. Yeah. It's Snicky's. Yeah. And they escape yeah. in the Cobra hovercraft. Not a hovercraft. Not a hovercraft. It's a, uh, it, it's a hydrofoil. Not a hydrofoil. It's nope. like a, it doesn't hover. It's like a fan boat. Oh, you're basically. right. You're right. It's, it's, yeah. it's like a swamp boat. It's uh, the yeah, Morgan Eel, wasn't it? The, it's the water moccasin. Is water moccasin. Thank water you. Water moccasin. Um, uh and so now we're up to yet another toy that i just really want to buy this is another one yeah. that i have that was, a, that was a cool one. and i did too loved 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 this thing this was uh one of the coolest because th- this was there was that era like the second or third wave of gi joe when um uh cobra and gi joe were getting the same type of thing but the cobra one was always smaller but it, it was always like a little bit better it was always like cooler when you think about it like mm-hmm. so like um usually like because like there was the gi joe hovercraft the I killer know, whale yeah. which was which was massive that thing yeah. was huge but um it was hard to play with because it was so big it Dude, was I had almost like a tub all the time so did i and um the, my screws rusted i remember my grandma being real concerned that the screws were going to rust and fall apart but um uh but no the, the, the water moxin was way easier to play with you could do more you could yeah. you know you can do more with it um so like the the sky striker and the rattler came out at the same time and those mm-hmm. were both extremely cool toys and I, I can't say one's better than the other um i had the sky striker i loved it yeah you, you know, um, that, there's that lever on the top you pull back the wings and come out yeah you um, know yeah, it was you no. Know, that's an amazing toy. Um, I have a friend that collects just those. He doesn't collect any other GI Joe. He just collects Sky Strikers. He's got like four of them now. Yeah. Nice. Um, uh, yeah, that was it. That was a fantastic uh, thing. So oh, yeah, um, man. Destro is down in the. Um, he's in the um, the water marks and waiting for them to show up. But like you know, I guess he's trying to secure his his income also. Yeah, he's got the and he's got the Baroness with him. His yeah. lady, the, bar- the Baroness. Um. Who I don't know what she was a baroness of. What, what was? Well, maybe she has a little castle where they all dress up in animal masks like Destro does. Who yeah, knows? Well, yeah, Destro because yeah, Destro canonically. Yeah, was, see, that was what was weird about Destro is they they did that origin episode of Destro, and um, so Destro just wears a steel mask. Yeah, he's like and, he's um, in the Iron Mask essentially. Yeah, it's just yeah, just a, like a metal mask. But he goes to like the like Castle Destro, like he's part of this like Scottish clan or whatever. Even though he has no accent, he has no Scottish accent at all. Um, but the whole clan like wear these like animal masks, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh, that, that's the tradition. We all wear mat. We all wear animal masks. I'm like, well, why doesn't he have an animal mask? He's special. He's, he's, like metal. he's, he's a metal castle. Mask. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, he's also uh, apparently related to Lady J. That, um, I don't uh, know. but I don't know. yeah, uh, man. Um, so he's like, this looks suspiciously like the way to Zartan's lair. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> there yes. is. There is so much like little sniping back and forth, like in like Kirk Commander is like my my Destro, your intelligence succeeded <laughs> only by your good looks. Oh man, man, uh, the uh, little, the the mean girl stuff back and forth with them. So, uh, yeah, yeah, they just hated they just hated each other. Oh All yeah. Um, so I, I noticed here, uh, I, I, having seen uh, the Baroness in like uh, two different scenes now, that they are drawing her like she has Bell's palsy this entire time. Uh, her face is half her face is constantly melting in this uh, in this one. Um, so we show up at, at Zartan. Uh, Zartan's uh, Zartan's layer. Zartan's like a super cool dude, though, man. This oh, guy, yeah, like, man. 
this dude is like a ninja that lives in a swamp and he's got a bunch of these like heavy metal dudes that just like like work for him and he's got like illusions everywhere he can change colors this guy is awesome he's and th that was an action figure that that back in the day like like zartan like actually like changed color he was a master of disguise yeah. was this whole thing turn so blue. like um if you put him out in the sun he would turn blue and uh, and i think it was it's just that standard thing but that you know that toy effect that you know like if you get cold water on this thing it turns this color if you get it yeah. water, it turns back but um so when we were kids though we were probably like eight or nine when this uh when this came out i guess and like yeah. like how do they how do they do that it's a man like well, like what's the do how does this work um yeah. so a friend of mine was like oh i know how they do it it's chemicals and we're like, oh, well, of course. How wanted to think of, of it that it was chemicals? And he's like, yeah, man, you can taste it and taste the chemicals because he tastes different than a normal GI Joe. And so there was a rash of every, all of my friend circle <laughs> licking everyone lick their Zartan. And you all got mono. Um, like. And um, we licked our own Zartan. We didn't lick one Zartan. Know, you didn't like, say the part that I'm just I'm assuming all, I said we around a circle. No, no, I said we licked our Zartans plural zartan it's not like one plural, the plural, man like zartan. if y'all pulled your money together had one zartan to lick i don't know man uh it also he was hard, hard to get because you couldn't buy him by himself he only came with the swamp with this little swamp buggy he was yeah, more yeah, that, which um, also changed colors also changed colors That's yeah really yeah yeah really cool toy i had that myself uh yeah they had, they had that weird uh chest armor that was clear but if he was wearing that, he wouldn't. It would it blocked the UV out, so he yeah. wouldn't change colors there. If he was if he was wearing that, yeah, I'm like, um, but it was it was like a, it was like a crop top though. I remember like it was he had like a he was he had like a belly, like his belly would stick out of it. Yeah, he did. That was that was probably dudes could do that in the eighties though. You gotta remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you're like, right, you're right. Like Eddie Murphy, like like to wear like a crop top back in the back in the day. Um, so so uh, Cobra Commander uh, gives. Zartan a bunch of money and uh, they have a plan they're gonna they somehow somewhere they've made some music I don't know where this music came from but oh yeah Destro's made it a rock roll subliminal program yeah and they're gonna pay the dreadnoughts the dreadnoughts are, are these guys that look like uh, they look like roadies or bikers uh, from yeah, like the was, uh, 70s um, Ripper, Cutter and Torch right uh, Ripper a buzzer buzzer not yeah Bu buzzer had the uh, had the had the saw he had um, Ripper had like a like a gun with a big bayonet on it and uh torch yeah. had the, had a angler yeah. um and they looked like they looked like like dirtbag bikers these guys were awesome they look like they belong um, on um they're action figures for um like the road warrior like the the gang yeah they, they, they're very yeah they're very yeah. uh they're very road warrior they're um, and they're gonna pay these guys five dollars an hour to lip <laughs> five so, whole dollars and they're excited about it what was our campaign Man, look, I don't know. I, I know that when I first got a job in 1993, I was making four twenty-five an hour. These guys are getting premium rates. This will well, this was twice minimum wage in, yeah. in, in this year. So I mean, like it's it's decent, but I'm but I'm still like, you guys are like international terrorists, man. What like like how much you how, like what what's the how much were those Cobra guys making that are that are in the unemployment line? What's their what was their salary? Well, they didn't have to worry about other clothing, they just wore their uh, uniforms everywhere, apparently. So I, well, I mean, how much rent did that swamp? house cost that the uh the dreadnoughts lived in oh they did that it didn't cost any rent dude it had computers in it did you see what when they hit there was like an illusion and it had like the like computers and stuff in it, it i'm saying i'm saying i mean like they knocked know. over a radio shack for that you know they did <laughs> you probably you probably did yeah so um, we go back to um the joe's bazooka is playing golf at the gi joe base oh no 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 no, no. we got something we got something else before oh, that happens sorry, so. hold on yeah we got something okay so they're shooting video uh, that they, they, uh, <laughs> the, the Zartan, a Cobra commander Zartan have hired a director. This is the most typical looking director. This, this dude's got on like a, like a short sleeve jumpsuit. He's got like a, like an ascot on and like a beret. Mm -hmm. This dude is like, this Looks dude like was Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Um, this guy's, this guy's great. So, um, so he's the director, I guess, and they're shooting the video for Cole for a cold slither. They said yeah. they're all the red knocks are lip syncing here. And uh, Zartan's got this awesome like red wig on, but he still has like this. Um, he's got this face paint on. He looks like the singer from the uh, the the black metal band Immortal. And so he's a master of disguise, but he's always got face paint on. So I don't uh, like like 
okay, yeah, you got red hair now, buddy, but you still look like a bath hey, from the mall. He so. looks like he looks like any like glam band guy from the eighties. It's fine here. Yeah, he does here. Um, so, but the producer here is is angry because they're going into overtime and uh, hey, the budget is about going into overtime and. And I, I, because I briefly worked in film, I was like, oh, I, that was that's absolutely oh, yeah. spot on accurate. Um, I was like, oh, well, all right. So um, I, I was hoping he was going to invoke the pizza rule uh, uh, about this. So um, what's the pizza rule? There's OK. So um, if you go into overtime and this this is the kind of uh, a hazy memory, but um, if you go into overtime, there's a rule that uh, that or after X amount of time you have to the the the, uh, the producer has to buy everyone dinner so they have to they have to pay for dinner uh, like and this is after they've already bought you lunch or whatever but um mm-hmm. but there's a rule there that says that uh and this was negotiated into the contract with this with the like the actors and the um like the actor i think actors guild the uh directors guild and the um iotsi the guys that are like the uh like every like the the grips and all this stuff mm-hmm. so they can only out of all these times if they do this more than once they can only the, the bonus meal the overtime meal can only be pizza one day a week so they can't just cop out and order pizza oh nice five days in a row if they're going nice. to overtime so that they can only do that one day a week or something like that so um i was like oh say the, say the pizza say the pizza <laughs> so um <laughs> uh yeah um so okay so now now we get the golf. Okay, so we're back at the GI Joe's, at the GI Joe headquarters, the pit, mm-hmm. as it's called in the comic books. Um, so Bazooka, four, four. He's dude. He's so <laughs> understood. Four. He cracks this ball, and it just it just sails in front of the the headquarters. And uh, so we we cut to Gung Ho is on a high dive, mm-hmm. and this this golf ball cracks him in the head. And he falls yep. off the high dive into the water and he splashes Lady J, who is, uh, is either Lady J or a cover girl. I'm not sure. Um, because they weren't like, in their uniform, I couldn't tell. So she's short hair. Well, they both have short. No, no, not as short. Lady J is like the little pixie cut. Lady J, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, so yeah, she so she gets splashed off the raft, and um, mm-hmm. the, so then, then the ball flies up and, and it, it hits a grill where I, I, I believe that this was Flint was grilling some food. No, I, no, I, no, it was I, barbecue. Oh, that makes a lot. Of, see, normally you see? only see barbecue in the full blown like, he, like, uh, like firefighting gear. So yeah, yeah that actually, makes he's a uh, he's great because he's supposed to be from Maine. So when he talks, he's like, "Yeah, you ready for your burgers?" That's it's, right. You're, yes. you're right. You're right. And so, I wish that that accent will really piss off my ex wife. Anyways, um, uh, it sounded well, like <laughs> and no, the, the ball it, lands in Alpine salad. That was uh, oh that was I see I thought that was Doc but you're right that was that Alpine. was Alpine man he looked, he looked cool. he's got his hat on he's got his he's got his rock climbing gear on him all the time on him while he's sitting outside yeah what in God's name is he eating because at first I was like is that like some nachos or something but it's just like covered in in guacamole if so yeah. but then I was like well maybe it is a salad but he's reaching over and, and eating the salad with his hands he's just picking up chunks of salad. Or whatever it is with his hands eating it but so he picks up he's just he's reading a magazine or something and he picks up something he picks up what he thinks is a piece of it right and, and he he puts it he puts it in his mouth so you, you know the gag is going to be that he picks up the golf ball but the animation yeah. messes up here and and the animation leaves the, the white golf ball in the plate and then, <laughs> but then he picks up the golf ball and it just it just animates off the top of it and but they colored it green, so it looks like he picked up a big Brussels sprout and 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 ate it. And then you know, then he gets, you know, he gets mad about this. But this this whole sequence reminded me of um, uh, like way back in the day. Um, one of the guys that I played GI Joe with um was this dude Joey who was old, a little bit older than my immediate circle of friends, but he lived in the same neighborhood and he um. Yeah he was a you know he he taught me how to play D D or whatever and uh but this dude was one of those guys that was just perennially just full of crap he would just lie and tell you the most outlandish stories like they're the most believable thing so he told us this thing and he told us a few times how he was at a pep rally one time at school and um and uh, like he like he had his um 
he had been carrying his Yoda figure with him from Empire Strikes Back. Uh, yeah. And um, so the band during the, um, uh, the during the pep rally, the school band was played a part of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. and which was not uh, out of the ordinary and bands would do that um so he was just like yeah star wars and when he did it he like like i'm telling you what he told us i'm not telling you that this actually happened but so when he was like pumping his fists in the air like going ye yelling yeah star wars and, and when he did i guess he pumped real hard and he let go and yoda went flying onto the field and it landed in the it landed in the tuba and the tuba uh, player, yeah. the tuba player hit the note, and and then and so it, Yoda comes flying out and lands on the xylophone, and so the xylophone guy hits the hits the, right when he hits the key and it flips off and then it hits the band director in the head and he picks it up he throws it and then he my friend catches it right that's that's the story that he told yeah, us yeah yeah I believe that happened and also uh, I you know believe that uh, Michael Keaton is uh, a friend of mine also. Um, years he dude he told us that story for oh god that like, is that is like it is like that's one of those like teen comedy things that are really bad that come on like uh nickelodeon the, during the 80s and like all that thing happens like obviously that's how it happened yeah right right yeah. make it up yeah yeah that's what it sounds like anyways yeah. <laughs> so man okay these yeah. are possibly through my through my favorite screw off gi joe guys in the uh in their this like like rec room shipwreck right laying there Brooklyn. he's laying there reading a magazine with a with, he's got his parrot on his shoulder yeah like laying down with a parrot on his shoulder this yep. is great breaker and breaker uh, loose and footloose yeah footloose um, is like the he is the stereotypical like a vietnam guy man, man. yeah he's, he's even got the foliage in his helmet still he sounds like tommy chong he kind of does he's like, like he does. yeah he's yeah um Breaker, so, the, uh, the guy did work, does all the communication stuff, and Shipwreck is a pirate, I guess. But uh, <laughs> yeah, these guys like the village people. Um, <laughs> they they should have gotten Gung Ho in there because he would really fit in. Oh uh, my god! But, um, so, they, so they're so they're watching TV. I guess Breaker's constantly monitoring every every channel in the history mm -hmm. of the world. He's he's a he's a, a comms nerd. But so the Cold Southern video comes on. And they're these dudes are just getting into it. They're like, oh yeah, cold southern. And so they just get up and they're like zombies and they're like just chanting cold southern. And they they and they're they they're splitting. So like so they they go and they 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 take a uh a G. I think I think they grab an off striker or a they vamp. Do. I think it was vamp. And um and okay. so yeah, so so they're going to leave and there's a checkpoint there, okay? <laughs> so yes. th th these poor security guards are trying to stop him. And uh, they break through, of course, you know, whatever. But there's a sign on the checkpoint that says stop. But but over the stop, it's got a circle slash general prohibition thing, you know, the circle with the with the slash. So I guess it's don't stop, but the barricade's down. So I guess maybe do stop. I don't know what I, I, I'm very confused as to what the. As, it's as just a big don't. Also, um, was this around the same time that uh, Tomex and Zaymont go and meet with the uh, current commander? We've decided we're going to be your partners. Uh, yeah, they're, they're going to split the profits of Cold because Cold at this point they reveal the Cold Slither is like like in the top ten of of, of hit songs. Like it's the, yeah. it's the number it, it's it's climbing the charts, man. This dude, they, these dudes are like, and they're uh, they're like, all right, make, you know, if you actually have a good plan here, all right, we'll back you again. Let's let's do this. Yeah. Um, so uh, so yeah, so the Cobra Commander, uh, you know, he. he he's basically decides he's holding the world hostage at this point. So he, um, he, he wants, uh, Oh no. So oh, no, the concert starts. That's right. The concerts yeah. like in full, in full swing. And there's like, that's a, what it is during the concert. Yeah. There's like a bazillion cold Slither fans. These dudes are, these dudes are just like, like, you Whoa, know, Slither. Dude, everyone's so excited to see cold Slither. And like, um, so, so yeah, um, Cobra commander just flat out broadcast this thing. And he's all like, I'm enslaving all of you guys. And I want a hundred billion dollars yeah like he skips the dr evil business and he just goes right, right to him. like i'm like no man, that's, a, that's a good ransom now yeah no joke and the, the best one of the best lines in there is uh they're all at the show and uh someone says something and like footloose footloose says yeah let's get mellow <laughs> i'm telling you he's tommy john he is, he is. He is tommy john 
um so like god so th- so this this concert's going on and the the, the dreadnoks are are are, uh, are playing their whole deal and so they decide lip syncing a five minute song is just too much work and they just start throwing and they just start throwing their instruments and and, and they're leaving and, hey man for five bucks an hour i don't blame you man these guys are no. these guys are like loud quitting like like good for these guys man they, like good for them man i'm, I'm yeah. glad they're uh um Lady so uh and scarlet and cover girl all three show up so so you can see all of them there show up to foil the they show up dressed like um like groupies to uh hit the uh the dreadnoughts in the like the the in the the, the green room <laughs> why were they wearing disguises i don't know man. like what was the, like i get maybe there was some cobra security there or something like that i don't know but I, that, that, I guess that i guess that makes sense but um this was and they did these women just throw so much kung fu on these poor dreadnoughts yeah. and they just like beat the living snot out of these guys this is great because i because i believe that canonically all three of them are proficient oh, yeah. in martial arts i, I think yeah, that's I mean, just something they give Starlet to everyone. is one of the big ones yeah yeah, yeah. um I, I think that's something they give to every uh every lady gi joe they all they're all like martial arts uh uh experts or whatever um yeah, so they beat they beat up the dread the dreadnoughts because the dread the dreadnoughts in in the cartoon were always just comic relief. They were always these bumbling idiots, and um, which is a very sharp contrast to the comic. In the comics, they were like they were just like a bunch of psychopaths. They were a bunch of crazy bikers. Um, but so the, the uh, cover girl Lady J and Scarlet break into the control room, and they uh, they they uh, this uh, you know they basically run the they run the co- they run Cobra Commander and Destro, and uh, they can. S- like like, like hey, Lady G or Scarlet, one of them grabs the uh, the the uh, the chainsaw gun and slices through the uh, console. Saws, saws the console, and yeah. I, there, was, there was a really funny bit where um, they were they were like demonstrating uh, how much power they had over the, the audience. They were like, so Cobra Commanders like say hail Cobra, and the whole crowd's like hail Cobra, and then like say hail Cobra Commander, and like hail Cobra Commander, and then like Baroness grabs <laughs> and she's giving these commands. She's giving these dumb say destro and baroness are the best and they're like yeah. baroness and destro are the best and so, commander just gets fed up with it just snatches the mic back this is really funny um so they break the concert up and so but i i guess that just turning it off i guess freed everybody i guess it freed the whole mind control well, thing well like right before they did that uh they i think it was um i want to say scarlet gets on there it says and shipwreck breaker and uh footloose will be on pt duty for the next month it was k it was kp it was kp uh, KP. it was yeah. kp yeah that was that was pretty fun the whole crowd is like yeah shipwreck footloose and breaker will be on KP. <laughs> the gag runs of course they saw the console and after like man where are we <laughs> yeah, that was like, yeah, that was really yeah. funny um so then but then we get oh uh, we get here it is. This is this is what we've been waiting for this entire time. So it's not what I've been waiting for, but okay. Oh, that's what I've been waiting for the, the whole average time. Joes. Oh, so oh, so so, the, so, the, so the Joes are in the control room and they're like, "Man, we've got to, these people are here for a concert. We got to salvage it somehow." And so they're like, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" And oh god, here it is. So I got a hand to them though. They were smart enough to put rock and roll on on lead guitar. Well, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to that in a second. I'm gonna, okay, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. Get, I'm gonna get to that in a second. So, um, and they, they did not put him on lead guitar, and I'm gonna tell you why in a second. Um, so they aver- they announced the average Joe's band, and it's and it's all the Joes that were on this mission together, and they and they they're on stage and they just rip through the actual GI Joe theme. Mm-hmm. It was the dumbest, cheesiest thing of all time, and I <laughs> love yeah. every second of this. It was like yeah. it, it it's like if Soundwave decided to like play the trick like actually perform the transformers theme at a, at a concert in yeah. uh, you know in, in transformers this is great um so uh so yeah it's uh shipwreck is playing drums mm-hmm. um breakers playing keyboards uh rock and roll it was it rock and roll footloose and duke are are all playing some sort of guitar that vary between two strings and three strings mm-hmm. and then uh lady j scarlet and uh cover girl are are doing the, the three woman backup vocal uh thing which uh which i hate um but 
so rock and roll canonically played in rock and in, in rock bands mm -hmm. that's um that's that's but he's also a machine gunner and rock and roll in army terms means to shoot full auto with machine gun. So he's, it's like a double thing there, but he canonically played in rock and roll. So I'll buy him being able to just get up and jam. Yeah. Um, Footloose, maybe. I mean, he's kind of a Tommy Chong dude. Yeah, I can, yeah, you know, he, he, he was, jam. I, I would say he could at least get up there and jam. Yeah. So, yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. I, I can see it. I can see him, you know, like, like that. Um, so the ladies are singing and that's and that's that's you know whatever of course breaker's playing the keyboards and, mm -hmm. I, and I'll, I'll i'll buy that um yeah. shipwreck is playing the drums i don't know i don't really buy him being a drummer but drums are like like i i play at a lot of instruments and i'm not taking anything away from anyone that's actually good at these things but drums are the easiest instrument to to attain like like a base level of competence competency at like mm -hmm. you can like i mean you can, you can count the four. Drums. You can just play. Drums. You can just play drums. It's a, you can keep a beat. You know, whatever. You're not good, but you can, you can at least you know kind of keep a beat as long as you have some semblance of rhythm. You won't um, be hurt, but you can play. But I absolutely do not buy Duke playing uh, an instrument at all. I could see him being that the guy who plays Wonderwall at a at a campfire. That's as, as far as I can get. Man, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't see it. I, 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 I'm not buying it. Um, I'm not buying it at all. But, um, you know. but here's here's some here's some fun info on rock and roll. That rock and roll, according to this file card, mm -hmm. rock and roll was a surfer in Malibu. Oh, I can see. It, that was a weightlifter, and played bass guitar in local rock bands. This all checks Do out. Do you know? Yeah, which I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Do you know who else was a surfer, a weightlifter? And a bassist around Malibu, uh, around Malibu at this time, and also had long blonde hair and a blonde beard. Real life. Well, that's right. That's right, brother. It's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> it all works together. <laughs> it's brother. Right, it fits right in. It fits I didn't right know in. he so played bass guitar too. I, I knew he was a surfer. Yeah. I mean, he had that. Yeah, he, um, yeah, yeah. He played bass in, in a. He was actually a. That, that was what he was doing when he got into wrestling. He was. Uh, he played bass in some bar bands, and um, and there's that story about how um, uh, he he was. He said like in an interview one time that um, uh, he auditioned for Metallica after uh, Jason Newstead quit. Wow. Yeah, and and but, of course Hogan embellishing it was like, oh yeah, brother, and they wanted me, but I didn't have time. I, I didn't want to be off the off the, the road and wrestling. And I'm like, I don't think that's how that went down, Hulk. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, and that's it. They send the crowd home happy with with playing the GI Joe theme. Yeah, that that wouldn't check. That does not check out. That is the that is the biggest leap of faith I've taken this entire episode. And I, I we saw a little person, you know, gang. You know, mob boss in the new orleans um billiards hall, billiards hall. I, that all checks out to me that all checks out them playing this and the people loving it does not that is the furthest leap of faith in this whole episode uh, you know i have a friend that has a theory that uh that that any crowd will just enjoy any live music if you just put in any yeah. any band on stage and i, I i'm like i i don't i don't agree with that at all um but i don't know maybe maybe it happened here i, I, don't, I don't know um if you're expecting was, to go watch a really bad band you're gonna you know enjoy a really bad band you're expecting to see this big hit and they're not there no they, man. Played, the, they played the hit that was and that, the thing is that was the only song they had they didn't have like an album it wasn't like they um oh, maybe, maybe, yeah. oh, uh, ah, but hold on let's circle let's circle back to 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 uh to friend of the show jehu once again okay Remember, a, a while back he posted that theory that in in Transformers and the G.I. Joe, there's only one song. Like every time you hear background music, it's always the same song, right? So now they've they they've heard they finally heard a second song. No. So that's why they're that's why they're excited. Well, it's maybe, a new song. Maybe, maybe. I, I can see it's that. A, new yeah. song. a lot of times they only it's a, it's a variation of the instrumental from Cold Slither. Slither. That's what I'm saying. That's anytime yeah, yeah. you hear music, it's always yeah, I see that. Oh God, it checks out. Yeah, exactly. So, um, mystery song. Yeah. So yeah, they they're very excited to hear hear another song finally after all, after all these years. Okay, I totally cannot shame them for that. Okay, good point. Good point. I'll, I'll go with it. And that was it. Um, <laughs> uh, I really 
cannot express how much fun I had watching this episode. Um, this is a case where I've, I've said before that I, I haven't really gone back to G.I. Joe much as an adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of it is just because I, I tried to go back and watch Voltron and it, it aged very poorly. And I assumed this was just going to be the worst thing I'd ever seen in my life. But uh, I'm very happy to report that uh, this is one of the best things I have ever seen <laughs> in my life. I was so thrilled i was just absolutely like enamored with every second of this i loved every dumb thing i loved every cool thing um it, it's actually a pretty decent solid uh solid story i got some i got some cool cause I, i've said before i've been on the verge of collecting your know, three and three quarter inch gi joe 80s gi joes for a while like um yeah. but uh and th this may have just pushed me over the edge because there was just the, like like the, the toy ad part just stopped like halfway through the episode and and there was no more you know, like, like I'm not going to go by like a concert stage or there, there wasn't like a Cobra, like, like, I don't, there wasn't like a auditorium in the terror drome or anything like that. But, um, I got to see the sky striker, one of my favorite toys of all time. Oh, yeah. I got to see all kinds of cool characters that I like. Um, this was super cool. Um, I, uh, but, and, and I remember liking this episode when I was a kid, uh, even though yeah. it was, I knew it was cheesy and, uh, and it, so I, I am giving a unified rating on this one an unprecedented never before awarded six trench coats out of five wait so this is the best this is the best thing that we have watched <laughs> this is the best thing that i've watched so far at six i have i have broken the scale i have gone to six trench coats turned it up to 11 all right out of five I cold slither has gone up to six to, to six. What do you got? Where are you? Where are you on this? Yeah, man. Um, uh, same thing. I I remember not. I, this is not a great episode to me in memory. It's gonna be fun to watch it and just see how ridiculous it is. And up until that last maybe minute when they were playing the average Joes are playing, I was in it, man, completely. I will I will say that I okay. I I've I made a TikTok for the uh, for the show. I'll, I'll kind of give a little quick, you know, hey guys, that's what we're doing this week. And so on and so forth. I had to stop. I, I did one at the beginning before I did it. And then halfway through the episode, I had to stop doing another message. I'm like, this is the perfect episode. I, I it, has, it has so many things I didn't even remember. And the thing is, we appreciate this more now as adults than we did as we, as we were kids. I'm like, oh, oh whatever, yeah, weird yeah. little guy. No, this is so good. This it's, is, yeah, this is, this is, yeah, it's, this it's is great. So um, and I, I'm almost scared to watch any more gi joe at this point because this is just so good but it was like i mean it touched it actually touched on a lot of on a lot of real world stuff and it oh yeah know, made some things make sense that don't normally make sense like you know how does how was cobra funded and whatever what was your, uh, my bad I, I i cut you off though what was your rating oh on? yeah well no um yeah so honestly with all those things i had the fact that i had to stop and tell people which apparently a lot of people are really into it and they uh, they started you know checking things out which i hopefully will check out the episode um yeah man i got to give this thing i i will not break the scale because i sure refused to do that and it had me at a full five until the last minute the average joe's brought me down to a four and a half holographic mud huts in the swamp out of five but man, I, I had i was on there until the average joe's played and i remembered why i i hated the episode as a kid because it was like ooh. Because that was the inevitable time your dad would walk in. What are you watching? And they see that, like, oh, you know, you're a real American hero. And they're like, oh, no, yeah, nothing. Like, what are you? What is this garbage you're watching? Yeah, here? pretty much. No, they didn't see all the cool stuff. They didn't see all the, yeah. they didn't see the, uh, the Lilliputian man with $100,000 in the swamp. They didn't yeah. see Zartan being really cool. They didn't see real metal being played on the stage yeah man uh um, this is this was one of my favorite episodes i'm so glad we went back and watched it and it, this is even more reinforces the idea that i want to play with this more uh as a as a uh, kind of a you know filler fun thing to do yeah this, this was yeah this was this was uh yeah it, easily the, like possibly some of the most fun i've, I've had uh yeah. watching anything so far uh yeah can't say enough good about it um real quick i gotta say uh back back in the um early 90s uh we, i had a friend named dave and uh i, I was like my, my friends matt and charles and stuff they were like hey, hey if he starts talking about a job opportunity say no oh okay whatever man he worked at like a kmb uh you know remember kmb drugstores yeah 
he worked on one of those and he's like he's like talking about you know, he's he's think he thinks he has brewing in the background he's gonna make a lot of money i'm like all right man we're hanging out one day i'm like what are you talking about all the time he's like okay look now i got in on the on the level of this of this opportunity and i want you to work with me it was amway he was trying to talk me into being an amway salesman yeah i, I like i know no big no wow yeah um yeah i i had this um uh, th- there was a point where back in the nineties, I had this idea where I really like uh, uh, some, at some point the idea for ha- for having a movie theater, but also had bands play. Yeah. Um, and, and also you could have uh, like, like snacks, like food or whatever, and like do like theme nights or something like that. You could have like, um, you know, you could show like a Western and have like a, um, have like a surf band play. Cause that kind of goes together and you could, you know, you could serve like chili that night and, or you could do like, the god like a, a gangster movie and a sort of spaghetti or something you know or you know whatever you know you yeah. know um you, you know whatever but uh and you know you show old movies and that and you know that kind of thing but um i was working in a bookstore at the time and uh this and i was stocking something and a guy came up he's like hey how are you doing and i was like oh he's like hey do you have this book and i was like oh let me look for it and then he's like well uh hey man you ever uh, you like working here and i was like oh yeah that's you know it's okay whatever he's like well you ever thought about owning your own business and i was like yeah actually i have i have this idea for this uh thing and um foolishly just you know spouted out the entire you know plan that i had which is real dumb you know i mean i was like you know 21 but uh he's like well you know my wife and i have this thing where we help people start their own businesses and i was like oh really he's like yeah man um he's like uh, yeah see that sounds real cool so uh hey let me get your number and i'll give you a call about it I'm like okay cool and um so like, so he's like, he calls me a couple of days later and he's like, well, why don't we meet at the, at the, uh, this McDonald's and down here, well, I don't, I don't go over some stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know, whatever. So I'm going to meet the guy and he's like, talking to me about all this stuff. And then he's going through and he's drawing this diagram or whatever. And it's like, and I'm like, wait, I'm like, I'm like yeah, it's the thing at the top. And then there's like these two things and then three things and then four things underneath that. And I'm like, I was like, I was like, is this a pyramid scheme? He's like, no, 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 no. It's not. This is like a a triangle plan for success. <laughs> I was like, oh but, no. no! Use your words. Oh. What are what are pyramid? What are triangles? So, one sides of a pyramid. <laughs> and so he gets to the top, and he's all like, and, and he's like, and then and in a minute, I'm going to reveal the name of it's at the top of the pyramid, and we'll, and then he goes on and on, and I finally said, it's Amway, but don't let that don't let that scare you off. And then so he let me borrow all these like like videos and stuff on, on amway and books and all this stuff he's like take this home with you and uh you know and it's it only costs this much money to get in and well oh, and i'm like like i don't know i was like uh, just to be polite i was like yeah i'll take it home and watch it so that ended up me uh being uh me uh telling everyone that i worked with and my friends that i was like hey guys i got some amway videos and uh so it was like oh my god so we spent like all night like what one weekend night just like getting stupid drunk and uh, watching these Amway videos and oh just God. dying laughing at these things. They were, they were, they were very funny. And uh, I, I hate that I had to give them back because they were, it was one of those uh, weird uh, like kind of pre YouTube um, weirdo, mm-hmm. like artifact things that I, that I kind of wish that I could like scan or whatever, but um, oh, that's, that's uh, yeah. Yeah. That was, a, yeah, that was, uh, that was some weird, weird stuff. I never, uh, I don't think I ever saw that guy. Like I ended up giving him back to him, but I don't think I ever saw that guy again. I, I, I assumed that he'd be the kind of, the kind of guy that you would just see around town a lot, you know, trying to, like, yeah. Hey, how are you? How's it going? You ever thought about it? But like, Oh no, I haven't, I've never thought about having a business. I'm a, I like being a slave. Yeah. I just want to get paid. <laughs> yeah. so, own business. No, nothing like that, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, Everyone, thanks for hanging out with us, listening to us ramble about stuff in our lives and this amazing episode. And uh, I cannot wait to talk to Michael Charles Hill. That is his name. Three names. Michael Charles Hill. Remember that. Can you and, text uh, that to me so, okay, so I don't uh, forget it when we're yeah, talking? I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm kidding. Um, so, yeah, man, I'll, I'll be really excited. Uh, hopefully you can uh, join. You can, you can have a, you know, a meeting with him and I'll interview and ask him all kinds of things. He's he's willing to talk to about all the stuff he's done, even like talking about Space Avenger Cobra, all that stuff. So oh, good. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Him, yeah so, definitely. Yeah. All right, y'all. Um, thanks for being here this week, and uh, we will see you next time. Like I do have something to say before we go, though. I have a little thing to say, though, which is oh, yeah. uh, that uh, we're Cold Slither, and you'll be joining us soon. A band of vipers 
playing our tune. With an iron fist and a reptile hiss, we shall rule. We're tired of words. We've heard it before. I'm not going to play the game no more. Don't tell us what's right. Don't tell us what's wrong. Too late to resist because Cobra is strong. We're a cold slither, heavy metal machine through the eyes of a lizard. And you will dream when the venom stings and new order brings our control. I swear to God, I I want to go start a band right now and cover this. Like uh, I, that song has been an earworm in my head all day. I want to know who wrote it. I I need to know who wrote this because uh, I, I, I want to find out. I mark what Charles Hill did. I hope we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out on Wednesday then. So sounds like y'all take it easy. Have a great week and talk to you later. See ya. Yo, Joe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For the greatest rock and rollers in the land, the Average Joe Band. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. It's G.I. Joe against Cobra, the enemy, fighting to save the day. Mises Guys is performed by Evan Johns and Ed Strickland. Research is performed by Evan Johns, Ed Strickland, and with special research done by Boo of the Axelon Underground.net. All used images in the videos are property of Sunbow, Hasbro, Paramount, or Marvel. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in every week with us. We appreciate it.